what's up everybody it's Amaya so today's video is going to be one that I done I think once before and it was probably like a year or two years ago and I really thought it was time to update it this video is entitled products that I have changed my mind about. I'm not sure exactly who started this. I think I mentioned it in that video. I will put it down below for any of you who want to check it out. If I do mention who started it in that video, I give them full credit. Basically, what I'm going to be talking about today are products, like I said, that I changed my mind about. And that means that at one time I liked them and now I don't like them so much. I did like these at one time. I don't think that they're terrible products, but I don't love them like I once did, and I wouldn't rave about them as much as I once did, and I kind of just found some flaws in them. So yeah, that's what we're going to be doing today. So let's just hop right in. Okay, so I have 10 products here, and we're just gonna kind of get through them. Some of them are the products specifically, and other ones are just kind of the product type in general, and I just have the examples here. So product type product category that I found it's just not for me is stick foundation. I have my Wet n Wild Photo Focus Stick Foundation in Soft Ivory here and my e.l.f. Moisturizing Foundation Stick in Nude here. And these foundation sticks, there's nothing really wrong with them. I like the Wet n Wild one. It has a nice finish to it. It's not too crazy full coverage, but it still covers pretty nice. The e.l.f. one is definitely for those of you who have dry skin and you want a stick foundation, but you don't want it to be too drying. This one's definitely moisturizing, dare I say a little greasy. But the reason why I just don't like stick foundations is because I always felt like there was kind of a gimmick behind them. Like these were really popular for a little bit and it was just fun. Like you just swipe it on your face and then you buff it in. It's supposed to be so nice and perfect. And I've come to find out that I never reach for them and I just kind of have like a sticky, heavy feeling associated to them. When I think about them, I just think about foundation days that were not that great. So. I just don't feel like I'm going to be buying any more stick foundations in the future. I liked using them and I thought they were cool and convenient, but I just never reach for them and I don't really want to use them. So again, not bad products, just my personal preference. These products are fine, but just a category that I'm not going to be purchasing anymore. Okay, speaking of face products, I have a powder here that I got over the summer and I kind of liked it at first, but I wasn't a fan of it. But I kept trying to like it because there was such hype around it that I felt like I should like it. This is the Becca Hydra Mist Set and Refresh Powder. So a couple things about this product. It has cool packaging. It's really interesting, the whole concept where the powder has like 50% water in it or something like that, and it feels cooling to the touch on your skin. I think that's really cool. The thing that I don't like about this powder is the color. You know, that might not be such a big issue if they had other colors. I don't believe that they have any other colors other than this one shade, which is just kind of like a beigey, neutrally type of shade. Someone who's a lot fairer or someone who's a lot darker, this isn't gonna work so well. And for me, I just felt like it made my under eyes kind of oxidized. And I noticed some other people saying that, but. I kind of ignored it. It does not work well with a sponge, like at all. You have to use a brush with it, which is just not my personal preference of powder application anyway. But other than that, it just turned my under eyes dark. It made them look a little bit cakey. And while the feeling is cool, the color and the texture just, I was not a fan. So yeah, I used this a lot over the summer and I really did like it for a little bit, but not so much anymore. So I have another Becca product here, and this definitely is not a Becca bashing video in any way. This is something that kind of pains me to say. I'll explain. So these are the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfectors, and this one's in the shade Prosecco Pop, and I didn't really like this one anyway. It was much too gold for my skin tone. It just really wasn't my thing, and I really bought it because it was Jaclyn Hill's collaboration. But the thing that I don't like about these is one, I think that they are very expensive, and that there are lots of better highlighters out there. I think these are really hyped up. And two, they are incredibly fragile. For such an expensive highlighter, 
oh my god they break so easily i have broken both of the champagne pop highlighters that i have in this format i have two one i broke probably a year after I got it back like when it first came out and then the other one I broke probably a couple years afterwards but I didn't use them very often so they were just literally sitting in my drawer and that's the thing I could understand a product breaking if I was bringing it out and using it and if I was using it all the time and the product broke after a couple years fine a lot of wear and tear makes sense things don't last forever but I literally never use these they just chill in my drawer and it's not like I'm banging my drawer around or being really rough or anything no they just are that fragile. And like I said, the formula is okay. They're, you know, a highlighter. They're shimmery, but worth $38 and worth all the hype that they've gotten, not for me. I just think there's a lot of better highlighters out there, even drugstore highlighters that are better, and we've just come a long way since these were really hyped up, so. Okay, another face product that I don't hate, and I haven't completely changed my mind on them, but... I don't love them as much as I thought I did. These are the e.l.f. Jelly Pop Flush Blush. I have both the shades Peach Pop and Berry Pop. And the first thing I have to say is these smell amazing. Oh my god, they smell like, I don't know, like strawberry yummy deliciousness. Uh, they smell so good. They smell like body wash you would use as a little kid or like bubble bath. Peach Pop I used a lot over the summer for really natural makeup days for when I wanted that very glowy bronzy appearance. Berry Pop I actually just got not that long ago and the thing about these is they can go overboard super quickly. I usually use a stipple brush or my fingers to apply these and if you get even the slightest bit too much like the slightest bit it's it's done for. When you use these correctly, when you get a good amount, the correct amount, they're fine. I think they look really nice, especially if you're someone who likes very natural glowy makeup and you kind of want that summery shimmer look to your blush and you don't mind there being shimmer in your blush. These are really cool. They wear for a decently long time. They look pretty nice on the skin. I don't have an issue with them, but it's the fact that you can so easily go overboard with these that makes me just not want to use them. And it really made me change my mind about them because at first I was like, these are really cool. But one day I used a little too much and it was a disaster. And then from then on, I just kept using too much or I would not use enough. So I tried to put more on and it would just become a disaster. So they aren't bad inherently. It's just user error and user application that is super easy to mess up. And I don't feel like a product should be that easy to mess up. All right, another highlighter product that, again, I don't hate this product. I just don't think it's that great. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Sun Dipped Glow Kit. So I've had this for several years and I've used it a lot and it's cool. That's about it. My favorite shade in here is Moonstone. I think it's really nice. It's very pretty. But I would always find when I would reach for these highlighters that I would just be underwhelmed with my glow. And that's something that I do not like to be underwhelmed about. I just felt like they didn't always look the best on the skin. They kind of blended out weird and the colors weren't exactly right. I don't know. And I always saw people raving about how glowy and beautiful these were. And I just never felt like I got the same result. But I thought, oh, maybe next time. Oh, maybe next time. Oh, maybe next time. And there was no next time because every time I would use it, I would say, oh, maybe next time it'll look better. And I just one day was like, no, I don't really like these. You know, I was really trying to make myself like them. And, you know, I did. I did decently like them for a little bit, but... I've just come to terms with the fact that I like other highlighters better and while these aren't bad, they're just not, they're not my favorite. Okay, I have two eyeshadow products here and the first one is a palette that I did rave about a little bit. I definitely did mention it in a couple of videos, but I don't know what happened to this. I don't know if it just got old or if it's just my preferences have changed, but I really don't like it like I used to. This is the Pure Soiree Diaries palette. And the thing I love about this palette is the color scheme. I think it's gorgeous. I love that you have the one row of shimmers and then the two row of mattes. It's very nice. But these shadows are really lacking in pigment and in blendability. It definitely feels like a drugstore quality eyeshadow palette. And that's not bashing the drugstore in any way. But the drugstore isn't particularly known for their amazing quality eyeshadows. And when you're paying for something at a pure cosmetics price point, you want it to be really good. And when I first started using this, I liked the color scheme, so I thought it was pretty good. I used it. It was nice. I did enjoy it. But 
The longer that time went on, I just was finding more and more eyeshadow palettes that had the same similar color scheme, but better formulation. It just looked nicer on the eyes and wore better, and I think it's good. And I still use it occasionally, and I don't think that it's a bad palette, but it's just not that great. Okay, so this next eyeshadow product is, again, not the product itself, but... The concept of the product or the product type and this is single shadows in custom palettes the only time that I ever really use my custom palettes this one especially is when I do client makeup because it's just really simple I don't have to pull out three different palettes to create the look that I'm going for because usually it's a very specific look the client usually knows what they want but single shadows are just not that good of a value you know a single shadow can range anywhere from like you know two dollars if you get a cheap one to like 10 or $20 if you get an expensive one. And you can get whole palettes for the, like 20 something dollars. And I just stopped and thought one day, okay, I can buy four eyeshadows for $20 at $5 a piece. Okay. Or I could buy for just a couple dollars more, a whole palette of like 10 or 12 shades. What am I doing? So I think that single shadows definitely have their place, like I said, for people that are doing client makeup. I just kind of put all of my favorite matte shades that I use often in here. And it's just an easy go-to palette that I can reach for and kind of mix and match. But for practical use and for everyday use, I just don't think that they're that great. Okay, so we're moving on to lip products and I have two like liquid lipsticks to talk about here. The first one is the NARS Velvet Lip Glide. This one's in the shade Swing and it's a gorgeous color. I absolutely love it. And the texture when it initially goes on is marvelous, okay? It is wonderful. It feels so smooth and buttery and velvety and moussey and yeah, it's just a very enjoyable experience. Definitely like, oh yes, this is what I paid for. But then an hour goes by and it starts to kind of break apart and wear away. Then another hour goes by and it's gone. Even if you wear a lip liner, even if you layer it, even if you just wear a thin layer so it just kind of looks like a stain. These wear off so freaking fast and it makes me so annoyed because they're very comfortable on the lips and I understand with a velvet lip product or maybe a satin lip product, they're not gonna last that long. But I understand if they wear off through eating, drinking, just long extended periods of time. That's fine, but when you're literally sitting in class and doing nothing and then your lip product's gone, that, it just does not make sense to me. And the thing is, I have my ColourPop Ultra Satin Lips. Very similar formula, very comfortable on the lips, really nice. I have literally worn a ColourPop Ultra Satin Lip for an entire day, like a five hour, six hour day. And then there's other times that I've worn my Ofra Liquid Lipsticks, which are cheaper than these and while they're more of a matte liquid lipstick formula they will literally wear again all day with a lip liner or with no lip liner and that's the thing that I'm just like ugh, NARS you try to do something very cool here this could have been done really well but the wear time on these is just so lacking and for that reason even though I really liked it at first it's just not practical for me and I can't say that it's worth the money okay next is another expensive lip product that I just don't understand. This is the Marc Jacobs Le Marc Liquid Lip and this is in Shush Blush. So I was very intrigued by these and I didn't get them when they first came out because again they're expensive but I found this one at TJ Maxx and it looked in really good quality. It was a reasonable price so I thought why not? Let's try it out. And the color on here is stunning. I love it. It's a beautiful like warm pink. Oh my god. Gorgeous. The thing that I hate about these, and this is something that I've heard other people talk about, is that they bleed. They bleed! For a Marc Jacobs lip product. It should not bleed! Like, this is the thing. This is NARS. This is Marc Jacobs. I have ColourPop products, which are five, six, seven dollars, that perform better than these. I'm just blown away. Like, come on guys, you guys are at a higher standard. You should be performing better. So it just boggles my mind that some people pay full price for this and then it bleeds on them. It's so annoying. I've used it with a lip liner. I've used it without a lip liner. I've used it just in a nice sheer type of wash. I've built it up and every single time it bleeds. And after like only like an hour or two, 
and that's what's concerning. If it bled maybe after five hours, I'd be like, okay, like I get it. But like one to two hours? I don't know. That just really annoys me when expensive products don't perform as well as some cheaper products because I'm like, I'm paying more money for this for what reason? For the name? Supposedly. And then the last product is something that might come as a shock to you guys because these are a lot of people's holy grails. These are the Buxom Full On Lip Polish and Full On Lip Cream. So here's my dealio with these. I love how these feel. I love how these look. I think that when they go on sale, they're not a bad price. When you can get them like half off, they're okay. The thing that I don't like about these is what they do to other lip products. So especially with White Russian, and I've noticed this since I've gotten it. This is a little bit older now, so it's not just something that it's doing as it's getting older. It's something that it did when I first got it. It breaks up whatever lip product I have underneath. So if I put this on a nude liquid lipstick, it will start to break it up and make it wear away. If it's just a regular lipstick, it'll break it up and wear it away. If it's a lip liner, break it up and wear it away. And they just tend to be a little bit sticky. They kind of like get that gunk around the inner corners of your mouth, which I hate. I don't know, that makes me mad. I'm just like, I have lip glosses, like my Essence Shine 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 Gloss, that looks so beautiful and glossy with just the tiniest little bit and doesn't break up what's underneath it. The ColourPop glosses, e.l.f. makes good glosses. For Buxom to be charging 20 something dollars for a lip gloss and to have it break up all the product underneath is just really not my jam and I don't wanna spend my money on it. Okay you guys, so that is everything for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Once again, I just wanna make it clear that I'm not bashing these products. I don't think that they're terrible products. They're products that, in my opinion, stopped working for me for one way or another. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Please give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know what you thought in the comments below, if you agree with my opinions, if you disagree, and yeah, I will see you in my next video. Mwah. Bye.